Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this memorial service for our friend Christine, a very loved child of God. I'm hoping that our live stream is working tonight. Thank you for being here, whether you're here in person, whether you're watching on live stream. And I'd particularly like to acknowledge um, Eric's presence tonight. Thank you, Eric. Eric is Christine's son. And um, our thoughts and prayers are with you, Eric, and your family and extended family back in the United States. Christine was many things to many people. But most importantly, she was a child of God, signed and sealed in her baptism, adopted into God's family with the promise that just as Jesus died and rose again, Christine too would be united with him both in death and in life, resurrection life. And so let's begin our service tonight reminding ourselves of our baptism and the promises that go with that. So we begin in God's name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing and we will sing the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Christine's good friend Craig Mapter to come and share 
an outline of Christine's life as prepared by her daughters. To the cherished daughters of Christine Gebby, Anna and Eileen, to her cherished son, Eric, and cherished stepsons, Jason and Nathan, and their families, to Christine's extended family members and the ever-broadening group of dear friends and associates that span churches and span the globe. I weep and mourn with you all at this time. My name is Craig Matner, a friend of Christine Gebby and Les Wright. I'm honoured to read the obituary prepared by Christine's daughters, Anna and Eileen. Christine Elizabeth Moore Gebby was born on June 26, 1943, in Sioux City, Iowa, to Irene Nee Stewart and Thomas Moore. She enrolled in St. Olaf College in 1961 because she wanted to study nursing in a Ruther environment, and those passions guided the rest of her life. A faithful and joyful churchgoer, she was an unstoppable force who made nursing and nurses better, improved public health, and pushed for the equality of women in all areas of life. And I see smiles on people's faces, and I think that captivates Christine really well. Christine's childhood was shaped by frequent moves due to her father's military career, living everywhere from Panama to the Philippines and New Mexico. And and stays with her, her maternal grandparents in Mild City, Montana. She was always happy in a new place, on a boat, on horseback, or when eating lefsa. I had to look that one up. Lefsa is a humble Norwegian flatbread made from leftover mashed potatoes, a little flour, rolled out flat and cooked on a stove, ready for dinner. Christine earned her Bachelor of Science in Nursing from St. Olaf in 1965, her Master's of Science in Nursing in Community Mental Health from UCLA in 1968, and her Doctorate in Public Health from the University of Michigan in 1995. After decades of being the first nurse and first woman in positions traditionally held by male doctors, she loved becoming Dr. Getty. Christine began focusing on public health and the role of nurses while still at UCLA and continued this work at St. Louis Hospital, oh, sorry, at St. Louis University, where she met dear friend Peggy McCoom. In 1973, she co-convened the first national conference on the classification of nursing diagnoses and was instrumental in the creation of NANDA International. 1982. NANDA stands for the North American Nursing Diagnosis Association. As the Oregon State Health Division Administrator from 1978 to 89 and the Washington Secretary of Health 1989 to 93, Christine was an early advocate for addressing HIV and AIDS as a public health crisis with universal education prevention and treatment efforts. She served on the first Presidential Commission on AIDS under Reagan and was the first National AIDS Policy Coordinator under Clinton. Later she focused on public health's role in emergency preparedness and disaster response, emphasising how nursing unique strengths could contribute. Throughout her career, Christine was involved in higher education, lecturing regularly publishing more than 270 articles and other works. She was the Elizabeth, the Elizabeth Standish Guild Professor at the Columbia University School of Nursing and Director of Columbia Center for Health Policy, 94 to 2008, and Dean of the Hunter Bellevue School of Nursing, 2008 to 2010. In retirement, she served as an adjunct professor at both Flinders University's Torrens Resilience Institute and the University of Adelaide School of Nursing, and also on the board of Australian Lutheran College. Her papers were donated to the Columbia University Health Sciences Library. Christine was on more boards and received more honours than can be listed here. 
but was particularly proud of her time as president of the Lutheran AIDS Network and to be a member of the Institute of Medicine of the National Academy of Sciences, the American Academy of Nursing and the New York Academy of Medicine. Christine was married to Neil Gebby from 65 to 89 and to Lester Wright from 94 to 2022. She and Les shared a passion for travel. After retiring to Australia, they spent a decade visiting as many places as possible from Uganda to Antarctica to Svalbard to Vietnam to walking Spain's Camino to Santiago. They loved very long ocean voyages and repeatedly visited the Himalayas and the Galapagos. Christine died on May 17, 2022 briefly predecessed by her beloved husband. During her final months of hospitalisation, she delighted in mentoring the nurses and administrators caring for her. I will remember going in there and seeing what she was saying to the nurses and making a comment, now oh, that's a good nurse, and, <laughs> and so on. <laughs> it was just amazing to watch. She is survived by her sister, Sina, her children, Anna, Eileen, Eric, Jason, and Nathan, along with 10 grandchildren, one great-granddaughter, her nephew, Kevin Kellogg, and many nieces, nephews, and cousins. Christine was a lifelong knitter and a very personal part of her legacy of the numerous sweaters and blankets she made for everyone she loved. I certainly remember in the many chats we had, she was able to chat and knit. So I probably saw a number of those creations happen uh, over the recent years. We give thanks to God, and I certainly give thanks to God for the life of Christine Gebby. Thanks, Craig. We have a short time of allow you to sit with your own memories, your own reflections of Christine.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, to whom else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Grant us the faith to trust in your word and to receive the comfort and hope that only you can give. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Our psalm for this evening are the verses from Psalm 98, and this psalm will be led by the cantor. I invite you to stand.
Reading from Isaiah 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 4, selected verses. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand to hear the reading of the Gospel, which is the traditional Gospel for Easter, John 20. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, 
Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him, take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Speaking of not recognising people, James, I didn't recognise you down there. I was at it. Ask this is James Winterley, I serve as a principal at Australian Lutheran College also known as ALC, um, and we had an important relationship with Christine. Professor Christine Gebby was appointed to the Australian Lutheran College Board following the 2015 General Convention of the Synod of the Lutheran Church of Australia and New Zealand. During her time she served in a variety of executive roles including as Secretary from 2017 to 2019 and Vice Chair in 2020. In September 2020, Christine was appointed as the board's chair, the first woman to be appointed to that position by the LCANZ, the General Church Board. She served in that role right until this present time. In fact, tomorrow will be our first meeting without her. Christine joined the ALC board at a time of critical cultural and organisational change. It was obvious that a business as usual approach was not adequate, would not adequately prepare ALC for its uncertain future, a future that has now well and truly arrived upon the college. Christine helped to feel, fearlessly initiate and drive the change that was and remains needed. While being eminently qualified in her own field, Christine and her husband Les were avid and dedicated students themselves. They read and studied the Hebrew and Christian scriptures together at the end of each day, and they encouraged and supported other people to do similar. Learning was a lifelong commitment for both of them. On a personal note, as an ALC board member and eventually as chair, and even in earlier days when I was her pastor here at St Stephen's, Christine supported my own well-being and development as a servant of Christ Jesus and the Church. She ensured that I had the opportunities that I needed for growth and offered a gentle nudge at times to make sure that I used those opportunities. She was able to successfully navigate what could be the difficult spaces between professional and personal relationships to my own benefit and I hope to hers too. We thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord for our sister Christine. Thanks James. And I'd like to share a few words of reflection um, based on the second reading you heard from 1st John. Life is a journey. I'm sorry for beginning with such a hackneyed cliché. But if there's any truth in that that can be salvaged from that cliché. Surely it applies to Christine, at least the Christine that I knew. She was always journeying somewhere, it seemed. And um, I'd ask, where to this time? As we shook hands after service, yeah, she'd say, oh, just the Himalayas or South America, the North Pole. Some of us have ventured vicariously, I think, through Christine's journeys. 
But I suspect the the journey for Christine was more than than just visiting other countries. I suspect for her it was a, an attitude. It was a about always moving forward of not being held back by tradition or the way things always have been done. Eric told me the other day that one of her mantras was, don't stay on the farm. Don't stay on the farm. There's a world out there to, to explore, to experience, to, to enjoy. It's God's world. And I think that was important. Christine. This is not just any old world, this is God's world. A world birthed out of nothing, nothing less than the pure, unadulterated love and grace of God. A love that God continues to pour out on this world and particularly on the people of this world in order that the people of this world might love each other. That was part of the journey for Christine. Wherever she was in the world, she sought out a, a community of those who had experienced the love of God. And she reminded us that God's love is practical personal and giving and forgiving and, and blind, blind to colour and race and sexuality and gender and age and social status. That God is love and as God is, so are we in the world. So are we in the world. Which is why we can't stay on the farm. And if anyone could get that message across by force of personality or, or determination of character, Christine could. And it's because of that force of personality and determination of character that perhaps we are surprised to be here today at a memorial service for Christine who seemed unstoppable, but in the end was not. In the end, that's an interesting phrase, isn't it? In the end. Is this the end of the journey for Christine? Well, I guess in one way it is as far as it's up to Christine, as far as it depends on her determination and, and force of character, then it is the end of her journey. Just like God, death shows no partiality. But what if it's not just up to Christine? What, what if it's up to God God who pours out God's love onto the world and on Christine. For what, what else is that love than God sending God's Son into the world to, to be an atoning sacrifice for sin? What else is that love than Jesus dying on the cross for us? What else is that love? Well, I'll tell you what else. Because Christine reminded me of that again and again, whenever I got lazy and I used Jesus' death on the cross as a shorthand to, to sum up the totality of God's love, she'd say, what about the resurrection? Don't forget the resurrection. Don't forget the resurrection. Now that is love. To raise from the dead the one who became sin for us, so that we might live through him 
and so that it's God lives in us. So God's love is perfected in us, in resurrection, in new life, in eternal life. That too is part of Christine's journey. And ours too. None of us can stay on the farm forever, whether we want to or not. In the end, it's not up to us. It's up to God. Thank God it's up to God. Because God is love. I'm sorry for ending with such a hackneyed cliche. God is love. But if there's any truth to be salvaged in that cliche, surely it applies to Christine. I invite you to stand. Let's join in singing the Easter hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, remember us in our time of remembering. Thank you for Christine, for the way you worked in her and, and through her. Thank you for what we have received from her and the blessing she was to the community she was involved in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with all who mourn, 
Comfort us in our grief. Take our tears, our sadness, our sorrow into your loving embrace, assuring us of your presence, and in good time, wipe away the tears from our eyes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you Christine's family. Draw them close together that they may support each other. Lord, in your mercy, as we journey through life, through valleys and over mountain tops, in joy and in sorrow, guide us by your Holy Spirit to be bearers of your love. As you are, so let us be. And so together with your Son, we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. I invite you to stand for the hymn. Christine and Les, worship was never finished until the postlude had ended. I invite you to stay and listen to the postlude and then come across to the hall for some food and some fellowship. 